as we start the webinar this morning, I'd like us to consider our own attitudes to money. And just a couple of reflection points that we need to be looking at is, you know, one of them is, are you sufficiently committed to the word of God? Are you sufficiently committed to spending time with God? Because when you spend time with God, he actually works with you. Um, to what extent is greed an issue in your life? Who rules your life? Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. That's in Hebrews 13.5. So the question that we should be asking is, is the pursuit of wealth more important than the pursuit of prosperity? And when we talk about prosperity in the Christian context, we're actually talking about prosperity as financial wholeness. In Psalm 73, 1 to 8, it says, But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the burdens common to men. They are not plagued by human ills. Their mouths claim, um, lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Have uh, you listened to rich dad, poor dad? Um, you know, he, he kind of like says, stay away from property. He says just, uh, you know, um, you should be um, renting and investing your money in other vehicles. But certainly from a biblical point of view, I believe that property is a good debt to be invested in. Um, I, I would say that credit card debt is a bad debt. Um, it's, um, you know, personal loans, steer away from personal loans. That's definitely a, a bad debt. Um, vehicles are, could potentially con be considered as a good debt. But I just want to spend maybe a little bit of time on, on vehicles. If the vehicle that you're buying is to get you um, to work and back because it's a, a, a way of generating income, that's a good debt. But if you're going to go out and buy a car that you can't afford, or like I said earlier on, you, you, you purchase a vehicle with a balloon payment at the end, so already you've got 30% uh, of the cost of the vehicle put at the end of, of, of the five-year term, which means that come the end of the five years, you're still sitting with this 30% worth of debt, then that's not a good debt, then that's a bad debt. So I always encourage people to rather buy a good second-hand vehicle um, that, um, that you can use, that you can afford. That would be a good debt because it's getting you to work and back and it's generating an income and it's generating wealth, which you can then use to invest to get to a place where you can afford to buy a vehicle. You know, um, I was sharing with, with, with a couple the other day how God has been so good to us. I mean, when we started out, we, um, the first vehicle we had was uh, a Mazda. Um, a few years ago, I walked in and I bought a Mercedes Cash. And that just gives you a, a sense of the goodness of God. I don't say that to boast at all. I'm just saying that with the right financial principles, if you implement them correctly, in the beginning, it makes you make choices which, yeah, you know, you, you're not going to look maybe as good as your peer uh, because they've chosen to get themselves in debt. But um, in the long run, it will make you financially free. So you are not a slave to the lender and that kind of thing. So good debt, um, home, and a reasonably priced car, bad debt, personal loan, credit card. <laughs>